So um, again, my name is Katie Stanton. I'm joined here with my fabulous colleague, Ina. And I um, want to share a little bit of backdrop about why we started Moxie. So, um, so I started Moxie about three years ago after being an angel investor for about 10 years and realized what a privilege it is. What a privilege it is to be able to back amazing founders like many of you here, um, doing important things, um, solving really hard problems that can help improve the lives and, and the workplaces of so many people. And we share this quote to begin with because you know, whatever you want to do, if you want to be great at it, you really have to love it. And starting a business, starting a venture fund, they are not lifestyle businesses. You are going to sacrifice a lot, as you all know. And, um, and, and there are easier paths in life, but we do it because we love it. And we love the journey. And, and I would just, you know, if, if you can remember anything from this, it's something that I think we've all learned along the way is that you've got to love the work and you've got to enjoy the journey. So a little bit about um, the why, and then we'll go into um, a little bit of the tactics about who we are and what we do. Um, so, so Moxie started three years ago and um, we have two partners and one associate. Um, both my partner, Alex, and I have been in Silicon Valley for the past 20 years, and we work together at Google and Twitter. And I was part of a, an investment collective called Hashtag Angels, the goal of getting more women, people of color, and operators onto the cap tables of successful companies. And we were able to start this fund because we had this proven track record of investing in a lot of, um, a lot of early stage companies and helping them grow. Alex and I are based in Boulder, sharing some of our time in San Francisco, and Ina is splitting her time between uh, New York and Philadelphia, where she's getting her MBA at Wharton. We invest all over the world. We started out just doing the US and we started to see so many amazing opportunities happening around the world. So we have a number of investments um, based outside of the United States that Ina will share a little bit later. Um, and then one of the things that when we talk to LPs when we're raising Moxie, one of the biggest issues and challenges that they see in venture funds are partnership risk. And it's something we see now also as investors investing in companies. And, um, and Alex and I have worked together for the past 20 years. Um, so we're old and, uh, and have, you know, a lot of these, you know, sort of, um, you know, tough experiences working at Google and Twitter and poor Twitter right now. Um, it's been <laughs> quite a, quite a journey for them too. And, um, and Ina is kind of this old soul where I feel like we've worked with Ina for, for the past 20 years as well. So really excited to have her on board. Um, in terms of our portfolio, our fund one was 25 million and I was a solo GP. The goal there was to get 5% ownership. We fully deployed out of that fund last year in Q3. And then fund two is 70 or 85 million. Actually, we went a little bit above um, our target. And our goal there has been 10% ownership. And we're lucky that we have um, built the team. We have two GPs, our associate, and we also have a part-time CFO. I should also mention we have this this uh, constellation of supporters um, in our network that help our portfolio founders from recruiting to design to PR to a health economist and really just trying to help our, our companies wherever they may need these sort of episodic needs um, to help them grow while at the same time helping us stay really lean. And we started deploying out of fund two in Q4 of last year. And then we are raising now a third fund that we call Momoxi, which is a $50 million fund. And the reason for that is that um, really um, threefold. First, Alex and I have um, between us now um, almost 100 companies that we have angel invested in. And many of those companies will come to us and say, hey, would you like to invest in our A's and B's? And we have to say no, because we haven't done that in the past. The second thing is that we've had companies in fund one that have offered us super pro rata because we have been helpful. And sometimes we get priced out of that, given that it's only a $25 million fund. And so um, we've had to yield some of that allocation back, which makes us sad. And then the third case has been companies that we've met along the way. And this is really the, the minority of the case, but we've met along the way and either we got there too late or um, it just, you know, um, it wasn't the right time for us. And so we've spun up SPVs or we've had a pass. And so um, we try to do some of those uh, investments out of Momoxia as well. 
So a little bit about who we are, just to double click on that. So I've been in, again, I'm old. I've been in Silicon Valley for the past 20 years. I worked at Yahoo, Google, Twitter, and Color, and um, have worked with Hashtag Angels and a number of different organizations helping to get more women and people of color on the cap tables. I'm on the board of a couple of companies, including Vivendi and um, a SPAC board with J. Cal's bestie, um, Chamath Palahapatia. And my fun fact is that I was friends with Kanye for one day, and now he blocks me on Twitter, and that's for a whole other Zoom. Um, my colleague, Alex, is a software engineer by background. Um, he was early at Google and at Twitter, and he also happens to be a pilot. And so after Twitter, he was president of Katie Hawk, the electric flying car company, basically like flying computers. He also has a lot of experience as an angel investor and has been an advisor. And his fun fact is that he was um, in a Netflix show, uh, the documentary, The Social Dilemma. I'll let Ina now tell her about herself. Thank you so much, Katie. Um, hi, everyone. So as Katie mentioned, my name is Ina, and I joined Moxie back in November as, uh, as an associate, as I'm also getting my MBA at Walton. Uh, prior to school and Moxie, I was actually at ERA, which is an early stage VC um, and an impact accelerator, really based uh, in New York and investing in companies across the world. So I was hired to basically build and grow our global division to support global companies uh, come to the US. And before that, I was working with Mohamed Yunus, who is the founder of Grameen Bank to support impact-focused companies. And I also had a stint as a founder, so I do understand some of your struggle here on the call um, with an edtech company. And a uh, fun fact is that I'm licensed to officiate weddings, and I've also lived in six countries. I'm originally from Cameroon and Madagascar, lived um, in Europe, in France, the UK, Russia, Senegal, and now the, um, the US. And Marie is our CFO, who has 20 years of finance and administration, working for multiple different funds um, in the Silicon Valley. She's really passionate about actually working with emerging managers. So the fit with Moxie is just very clear. Um, her fun fact is that she's an avid hip hop dancer and uh, Crocodile Dundee once bought her a tub of ice cream at the grocery store. So very cool. <laughs> So here's a little bit about um, our track record that led us to the moment of starting the fund. And between Alex and I, um, we haven't updated this slide um, you know, for a while <laughs> because the markets are so terrible. I don't even want to know, but it won't be that much different that we've invested in a lot of companies. Um, you know, and while the checks weren't small, we were often right and have been you know, early enough at a number of great companies, including Color and Coinbase and Airtable and Uber and Carta and, and um, Lambda School. And so we've been, you know, really Really enjoying this. And, you know, as an angel investor, and I, you know, I, I don't really know who's in the audience here and how many of you are, but I would strongly encourage you to do it to the extent that you can. Um, maybe finding VC firms. We were lucky enough to work with one VC firm to be a scout, which helped us to really turbocharge um, our experience as angel investors and our ability because it's a very expensive hobby, as you know. <laughs> um, one of the things I did right was reading Jason's book, Angel, How to Invest in Technology Startups. But one of the things I did wrong is that I didn't read the book or listen to the audio book until late in my angel investing career. So I would encourage you to read that book or listen to his audio book and do that um, you know, somewhat earlier um, in your angel investing career. All right, so Ina's gonna share a little bit about Moxie and where we are today with Moxie too. Great. So about six years ago, uh, six months ago, if you'd have asked us if we had a focus around a, um, a geographic focus, we would have said the US, but actually we've done now seven investment, really. One of them is actually still stealth, so we're excited to announce that. But out of those seven investments, five of them are actually global. So uh, our first company is Basigo, which is an e-mobility platform that is basically uh, providing a, a low-cost um, alternative to bus drivers and bus owners in East Africa, so really replacing diesel buses with um, electric. And uh, we're really excited about what the team is building. They're very, um, very knowledgeable in the space. Um, we have Good Trust, which is a Swedish-based company in the space, the end-of-life space, which is very gloomy, yet very important. Um, so basically providing a platform for families to organize the, the digital lives once they lose a, lost one, a loved one. Um, Capiche, which hails from Australia, is an AI-powered feedback analytics company that help um, you know, big tech companies um, really get feedback from the customers. So this company was really interesting because they have so much traction in Australia and they're really taking the US by storm and we're really trying to help them um, you know, grow the business here and also thinking about their, their upcoming um, raise. 
Uh, People Rain, which is one of our US companies, is an AI driven automation platform that makes work life better for employees at large ent- enterprises. So, really helping uh, call centers employees really, uh, you know, make the work a little bit more um, streamlined and um, effective. And so, again, another really great company that has, you know, so much traction already um, based in Boulder, but again, working with uh, companies across the, the country. Um, Rocket Doctor is from Canada, so I guess we are very North America um, focused as well. So that's a comprehensive digital health platform and a marketplace that has evolved into a virtual healthcare system. So that's uh, you know very big health healthcare business, and we really like them because the team is um, these are doctors, so really building solutions for doctors. And lastly, Vistapath, which is a Boston-based company that is providing AI-powered software and hardware to handle processing samples in pathology labs. So uh, the team has so much experience working in pathology labs and so really know the, uh, really know the, the, the problem hands on. So really excited about them and being able to support them in their journey. So this gets a lot of jokes on Twitter. Our VCs are always saying, Oh, like, how can I be helpful? But we really are in this business because we love being helpful and we know how to be helpful. Um, so here are a couple of ways that, um, you know, we really try to add value. From an engineering perspective, Alex is one of the few um, highly technical VCs out there. So as a software engineer, he has, you know, built and led and scaled and rebuilt and rescaled engineering organizations um, at a number of great companies. Um, from my background, I've been um, I've held a lot of different roles, including product and marketing and HR and um, and a bunch of other random things. Um, I worked at the White House um, for President Obama in his first administration, and as a result, I've been able to meet a number of you know and, and grow a number of relationships um, in the U.S. government, whether it's at the FDA or um, the SEC or in the White House itself and the State Department, and and that comes in handy because most of or I'd say half of our founders are immigrants, and now we have a number of um, employees outside the U.S., so there are a lot of visa questions that come up. So from time to time, we can be you know unusually helpful there. Um, and then Ina's amazing experience as a global citizen and also having worked at the Enza Academy and, um, and a number and at ERA has been really helpful to us as we think about fundraising and growing and emerging markets and thinking about the global economy. So um, these are all a number of ways that we try to be helpful and you know, try to help a lot of our companies get to product market fit. And in order to do that, it just takes a lot of cross-functional um, needs, whether it's in recruiting and design, marketing and comms, and, um, and introductions to a number of partners for distribution. So um, we really try to you know, work as hard as we can um, to help our, our companies wherever they may need it. And I'll just double click and give you a couple of examples. Um, Digital Brain is the first company that we led um, for Moxie One, and we're really proud of this one. The two founders are immigrants, um, and uh, the CEO and co-founder, Keshav, is someone that when we heard about his life story as someone who grew up in southern India in a coconut farming community. And when he was 11 or 12, someone gave him a Rubik's cube and he quickly became India's national champion. We're like, we're in, this kid knows how to solve problems. And he's such a tireless, relentless, hard worker. And, um, and it turned out that they were also building something really important, which is basically helping customer support teams, um, you know, uh, uh, it helped to accelerate their work workloads and, um, and, and work processes and workflows. So, um, so really excited that we were able to, you know, lead that round. Um, they just raised their series A and we've been, you know, try to be helpful when they're raising the series A thinking through all the different, um, you know, uh, the different strategic investors. We helped advise on PR. We've been helping interview for a lot of the key roles. And this one is, you know, really personal to us. We love the team, love the founders and love the business. A second one that we did from Moxie One is Daily, which is a video and audio chat API tool. And we love the mission. We love the founders and their timing was incredible because it was right before COVID hit and they wanted to be to video what Stripe is to billing and payments, which we thought was a great idea. And they've been able to, you know, really grow and scale. They are now at their series B, which is led by Renegade Partners and 
I think almost all their investors were women. So yay, Team Daily. And um, and even though we don't take board seats as part of our Moxie journey, because it's really hard for us to scale and just do board meetings all the time. And also, if you're a seed stage company, we want to hear from you like the day that you have a question. We don't want to wait till a quarterly meeting. Um, and so, uh, but the founders had asked us to join because they, you know, you know, did want our insight. So we're happy to do whatever founders would like us to do. And here too, we try to be really helpful if it's on press or marketing and recruiting and helping to think about tech, uh, technical challenges and opportunities, hiring that first CTO. And this is something that our partner, Alex, is really helpful with. In terms of our targeted investment criteria, um, we really look at software solutions to hard problems that can help a lot of people. And while we're generalists, the categories that we're drawn the most towards are in climate, health tech, and fintech. We think those are the, you know, three of the biggest problems that we have as a society. And especially in climate, it's something that um, affects all of us. And for those of you in like California and you see, you know, you know, uh, you know, rising temperatures and drier climates and more wildfires. And I left California for Colorado and I've already had three fires near my house. So it is something that is so urgent and so pressing that um, we're really determined to try to find software solutions that can help us protect our planet. Um, in terms of what we look for, we seek potential and determination, not necessarily pedigree. So we look for great founders wherever they may be. So to Ina's you know, point earlier that we found a lot of great founders and opportunities outside the US that have just been underlooked and we're really excited to help them grow and scale. We really value IQ and EQ. Um, you know, we believe great people will build great products and um, and and serving the world. We look for execution and capabilities. What have people done in the past that have gotten them ready for this particular moment? Um, we look for potential to be a category creator and or a leader, not necessarily just existing categories. So we do that too. And this is a new one. Um, with Moxie One, we we're pretty lenient, whether or not there is a technical founder, but I think we have found, in fact, not I think, I know we have found that a lot of teams struggle if they don't have a technical founder at the get-go or at least one for senior engineer building. So we always try to make sure that that is a requirement. And then lastly, world positive. We just want to make sure that everything we back is something that we're really proud of and something that adds a lot of positivity and good in the world. Okay, so the markets are terrible. And I know you're wondering, like, this is crazy and distracting and I'm scared and I don't want to look at my bank account and the news is just terrible and awful and we get it and we agree. But, and I hope you're hearing this a lot on, you know, at least, you know, from some of the other, you know, folks on Twitter and other, you know, leaders who have been there and seen these cycles before, today's the day. So today is the best day to start a company. Um, there's so much opportunity out there. There are so many problems that are worth solving. Um, and every great leader right now has their metal tested in this crisis. So the tourists are leaving. So now's your time to step up and meet this moment. And, um, and lastly, as a wise sage once said, fortunes are built through in the down market and collected in the up market. So thanks to Jay Cal for um, leading us on, um, on that note. And, um, and thank you to the launch team. Thank you to Landon um, and Shruti and everybody else for having us. We're really honored to be here. And here's how you can contact us. Amazing, amazing presentation, you two. This was super, super cool. Um, so let's just dive into the questions. I have a lot of them. First off, I mean, I love all the operating experience that you guys have on the team. I mean, that's extra impressive. My first question originally was uh, your favorite TV show, but I have a feeling it's Shit's Creek. Um, so we'll probably <laughs> skip that one. Um, I'll start with a question for, uh, for Ina. Um, so super cool. I mean, six countries that you've lived in and you guys are already investing outside of the US for Moxie Fund 2. Um, what is like a global founder community that you're the most bullish on or country? Oh, so I'm I know that, that's probably a hard question because there's so many, but if you, if you can pick one. There are. Uh, I'm very, I'm very biased because I mentioned I'm from Cameroon and Madagascar. So sure. my heart is in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, I'm really excited about, uh, you know, Francophone Africa, particularly. So Senegal, Ivory Coast. I think that those are markets that are a bit um, overlooked um, and specifically by U.S. and maybe, you know, English speaking investors. But I think that there is a lot happening there and then just, just resources that are just lacking. So I'm excited to see what will happen in the next few years there. 
Totally. Um, and Katie, you had mentioned that, um, you know, you guys were looking for EQ, IQ, um, and something that I extra agreed with was uh, demonstrated execution, um, credibility, or experience. Uh, what's your advice for a first-time founder when they want to, you know, <laughs> figure out how they can show that they've executed on, on things in the past? Yeah, I mean, it's it's so hard to build a great product. And so, like knowing what greatness looks like. And, you know, if it is having worked at some of the great product companies, or at least, you know, knowing how to build, knowing how to design, knowing how to test, at least having something out there that gives investors at least a, a perspective of, of how they think about building, how they think about growing, how they think about scaling. Um, you know, uh, it's better to, what is the expression? Like it's better to, uh, to invest in kind of a bad idea that's well executed than a great idea that's poorly executed. So execution. That's is a really, really cool quote. I love that. And we've seen many examples of that, you know, with the WeWorks, et cetera. So yeah, I think that, um, I totally agree. You know, execution is key. Um, so a question for both of you, um, because 75 companies, I mean, a lot of these were winners. I mean, that you showed on the list there. Um, and I'm curious, you know, like, how have you been able to spot a lot of these winners? And, you know, early in the process, even before, you know, maybe the public sees the company um, becoming something bigger. Um, I'd love to hear like some traits and insights, insights that you've recognized from those early conversations that maybe we can give to founders today. Yeah, I mean, some of the, the most important traits are just like relentlessness and mental toughness and ability and agility. So in most of, in all of the companies that we back, we look at four things. We look at the founder. What has led the founder to this moment? Um, what is, you know, their life, is this their life's work? Are they just determined to do this? This is an irrational business. You've got to be totally irrational and crazy to say, they like, I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to build this company. And that's sure. amazing. And so like, we want to find that, you know, like that kind of determination. We look at the product. Why is this product so important? What is the problem that they're solving? We look at the market. How big is this market? And we look at timing. Um, so daily being a video and chat API, great timing. Travel startups beginning of COVID, probably not so great. So, um, but in all of the examples that we had in those 75 or so, it was really just the sheer determination, ability, and agility of those founders. I love that. And, you know, we spoke about the positive companies. We'd love to kind of reverse engineer the question, and we'll start with you, Ina. Um, what is probably one thing a founder should never do during a pitch? Because we also want to be able to give those watching um, the do's and don'ts. That's a very good question. Um, I, I haven't had in any sort of a car or stories, but I think uh, just being rude, I think that's just it's it's very, I know it's very it's very obvious, but I think uh, at least you know I know a lot of VCs like to talk and they like to maybe give some feedback, and I think Gail mentioned something along those lines before. But I think just being just listening and and taking it, even if they don't uh, they don't you don't necessarily agree with what the VC is saying, just at least acknowledging that whatever they're saying is like okay, I'm hearing you, but maybe I won't follow that. I think that's you know not being able to listen and uh, and being rude. I think just doesn't land really well. That's great advice. Katie, what would you say for that? Because you've seen probably even more pitches and probably a lot of good ones, but a lot of bad ones as well. Yeah, don't lie. Don't lie. Yes. Because the truth will always come out. I think that's really, really important. And even I know Gail spoke about that, even if it's um, an answer that you think the VC doesn't want to hear, um, best to just be open and honest and transparent early, early in the conversation, considering that you might be, you know, with this VC for 10 plus years. So if you're lying at the beginning, probably not the best best decision. <laughs> um, so Katie, I understand that I, you, you spoke about this in a past event that we had as well, but you spent some time as a digital nomad. Um, I'm not sure if you're still doing that or not, but would love to kind of hear about your experiences um, and kind of like, you know, what you uh, learned from there. Cause I'm, that's something I'm actually considering. And I know a lot of founders um, tuning in today are probably considering that for a lifestyle as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think both Ian and I share one thing. Uh, we share a number of things, but one is just being global citizens and really wanting to explore and enjoy the world and not getting too attached to place. And I'd been in California for 20 years and, you know, on and off and had lived abroad, um, you know, in some stints, but 
my um, my kids were all taken off for schools and gap years and COVID was terrible and we had fires in California and, you know, just a lot of sadness in the world. And sometimes, you know, life is like a snow globe. You have to kind of shake it up a little bit and just kind of see where you land. That. And so um, so decided to take a road trip to see some um, friends, some family, some investors, some founders in different places. And that was a great idea. I got rid of almost all my belongings and put you know, whatever treasures I had in storage and some in my car and including my dog. And then my car got stolen on the first day. My oh, dog well. didn't, but my car did okay. and was able to track it down. <laughs> so I was off to an auspicious you know, start, but it was really good to just try to like see more of the country and um, and ended up spending more time in Boulder than I expected and ended up buying a house here with my partner. And um, and as it turns out, Alex, my business partner lives three blocks away. So we are also neighbors. So um, so that has worked out really nicely. And um, and I would definitely encourage all of you to, you know, take that snow globe effect every once in a while. Don't ever get too complacent. And there's so much of the world to see. There are so many new networks. You know, opportunity is global and our talent is, is universal, but opportunity is not kind of expression. And so, you know, like seek those opportunities, seek those, you know, new networks, always be refreshing your networks um, because they're just great people in all these different places around the world. That's wonderful advice, Katie. Thank you. Um, so you both spoke about some of the added um um, you know, features that you offer at Moxie uh, Ventures and, you know, the value to founders, those case studies were amazing. You know, how you give PR, you help with recruiting help. Um, you know, I'll start with you. Uh, what are some other, you know, additional things that founders can get from Moxie Ventures other than the amazing operating experience that the entire team has? Uh, what are some other uh, cool things that founders can get? Yeah, I think uh, because of our operation experience, um, I think we are very uh, concrete in the type of advice that we give. I think, you know, we can be very uh, obscure and sort of give very high level strategic advice. But I think because we've built things before, we also very founders first. So whatever founders need, you know, we want to be able to support them, uh, you know, in that regard. And if we don't have an answer, we'll try to at least redirect them. I think one thing that I've seen, at least in my, in my short time at Moxie, is how we actually help them to pull around together for, you know, when they're looking to raising maybe an A round, the way you know Katie has been very dedicated into you know tapping into her own network um, and trying to get access to you know great investors who might be might be interested, and in. I think that uh, that's something that is I think is really unique. And and we are a small team, and you know I think we're really able to get a lot done because of that. Um, yeah, I love that. You know, I'll even add a quick follow up question because you were a founder yourself. What were some things you felt were lacking in uh, VC before you joined the Moxie team? Things that you guys now offer at Moxie. I think one one of the reasons actually what I got really into VC myself is because I failed miserably to raise. And there is really no, there was there were no resources around, you know, how transparent, um, you know, there, was, there was no transparency in that business. So like, I didn't really know what VC expects, what they want. And I think that we're just really real um, here at Moxie. So even when we pass on a company, we always try to give the reason as to why we're passing. It's not just, hey, you know, you're too early and I come back when you have more traction. Like if you truly aren't necessarily interested, we'll say, this is out of our scope. Like we think you deserve someone who actually really believe in what you're building and that's not us. And I think that, uh, I think, uh, you know, founders are actually very grateful for that because we, we don't want to, spend, to waste anyone's time. I mean, I think that's something that I wish I'd seen more when I was, you know, in my own journey. Totally. Um, and Katie, you gave us a sneak peek of what the future of Oxy will look like and what you guys are really focus on right now. Um, you know, if you were to kind of dive a little deeper into the next five to 10 years, we'll say um, the types of founders that you want pitching you, um, you know, how large you think the firm, I try and differentiate like firm versus fund because, you know, fund is a little more short term, but you guys are building something that's going to outlive both of you. So I think that um, firm, like what are the five to 10 plans, uh, your plans for the firm? Yeah, it was always the goal that Moxie would be bigger than, you know, just us. And so one of the challenges that we have is that venture is really hard to scale um, because it's so personal. There's so much relationship. So we're trying to build some infrastructure that allow us to scale. So to Ina's point that most of the time, the answer is no, we can't invest in everything, but we really genuinely want to say like, no, but here are other ways that we can be helpful to you, or here are other investors that we think would be the most perfect fit. And right now, a lot of that just comes in our heads. Like, oh yeah, like, oh, we just talked to so-and-so and, you know, we can connect them or, you know, all the cold emails that come in. And there was a period of time that we just tried to answer everybody. And then people will answer you back and you just can't because you just can't scale. Mm -hmm. And so thinking about what are the ways that we can 
kind of scale kindness and scale compassion and scale helpfulness to founders around the world. Um, the ones that we say no to, and then the ones that we say yes to, like, yes, and how do we help you scale PR and recruiting and engineering? And, and even better, like we teach you how to do these things because you won't need us in a couple of rounds or two. <laughs> you know, you're going to be, hopefully you'll IPO or you'll get acquired and you'll do all these other things. So we really want to, you know, maybe just tying it back to the beginning of the presentation, you know, empower more founders to enjoy the journey. Totally. Well, Katie, Ina, I just want to say thank you so much. I know this is meet our fund, but I feel like we got to learn a lot about both of you as well. Um, you know, the ones behind the fund. Um, the Kanye um, comment was so funny, and we saw a comment come in the thread that uh, being blocked by Kanye today is a badge of honor. So, congrats to that, Katie. Thank you. <laughs> of course, I'm going to pass it over to Stephanie. But thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Um, we're going to be hearing from Jimmy Lee with Seed Invest, who is one of our sponsors for this Meet Our Fund event. Seed Invest is an online fundraising platform. They are designed for growth-obsessed startups. You can raise your seed or Series A from their network of over 600,000 investors. Um, lots of successfully funded companies have raised subsequent rounds with the VCs that you're hearing from in this event after raising um, through crowdfunding with Seed Invest. So I'd like to um, go ahead and welcome Jing Lee on and thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Stephanie. Good to see everybody. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jing. I'm here from Seed Invest. Um, Stephanie gave us a great precursor on, you know, what Seed Invest is, um, but we're essentially a leading crowdfunding platform that helps companies raise capital online. Um, so if anyone has raised capital in the past, I think it's, you know, a really clear, you know, problem, a little bit of a headache to, you know, go out and raise capital. Um, that's exactly, you know, what my co-founders Ryan and James realized back in 2012, um, looking around at their friends, family, other companies, people were spending, you know, more time raising capital than actually building their company. So um, with that, you know, with the founding of Seed Invest, as well as, you know, changes to the regulations, um, we were essentially able to build this two-sided marketplace to, uh, to help companies raise capital um, on the internet. So we're here to be, you know, your full service um, quality focused investment platform to help you guys raise capital, you know, from the crowd in the most seamless, compliant and efficient way. Um, so a little bit about me on the next slide here. Um, I've been with Seed Invest for um, about three and a half years now. Um, I've had, you know, a super interesting experience in those three and a half years. You know, when I started, we were a 20 person, you know, essentially a startup in a walk up in, you know, Soho in New York City. Um, and have since grown to, you know, a 70 person, you know, company arm, so to speak, um, at a larger 700 person org. Um, so during my tenure at Seed Invest, you know, I've worn a lot of hats by nature of being in that startup environment. So totally know what you guys are going through in, in a sense. Um, so everything from operations, onboarding, customer service to venture. Um, venture has luckily, you know, been my focus in the past two years. Years, um, is something that, you know, I've been able to have a hand in. Um, in my time on the venture team, I've worked with over 30 companies to raise capital on the platform. Um, a little tidbit fun fact, if you will. Um, I, my focus on, is mostly on seeds and series A, not necessarily married to it, more of a preference. Um, and I have a penchant for, you know, consumer driven, um, fintech and web three companies. So I, I alluded to this um, on the next slide, you'll see um, the backstory between, you know, Circle and Seed Invest. So Seed Invest founded in 2012. Um, we were essentially acquired by a global blockchain company called Circle back in 2019. Um, and we've essentially, you know, we've been um, their startup investing arm um, in, in the past, you know, couple of years. So for those of you who are not familiar with Circle, um, Circle 
Circle is um, a leading blockchain company and the creator of USDC, um, which is the dollar backed digital currency. And what we're looking to do is essentially create um, internet infrastructure um, for this digital currency and for companies to be able to operate um, on this blockchain and essentially move capital um, quicker than you know traditional um, traditional finance. So a number of you know different product offerings you can take a look at here. Um, obviously, you know there's Circle Circle accounts, um, our APIs that essentially helps um, companies you know um, with traditional you know finance items, but powered by our dollar backed digital currency. Um, so quicker payments, settlements, transactions, um, the works um, that is you know Circle accounts. Um, we also have a yield product um, to help companies grow their capital um, in a little bit um, a, a little bit more growth driven kind of way. Um, it's a yield generating product that leverages crypto capital markets um, to gain you know higher um, yield interest rates. So anywhere three to six percent. I think it really depends on um, what the market is these days. Um, but from the funding side, which is you know what we're really here um, today, there's essentially two venture arms at Seed Invest. Um, one is Circle Ventures, which is our strategic corporate venture arm. Um, this is you know. Um, our venture arm that makes direct investments into companies that um, have a lot of synergies with, you know, the Circle mission um, and will, you know, has, you know, a product, a company that is really helping to accelerate um, global crypto innovation, USDC adoption, the works. Um, and then there's Seed Invest, which is, you know, our main focus today, um, which is, you know, our online infrastructure to help companies raise capital. So your startup investment bank, if you will. Next slide. So since 2012, um, we've been, you know, pretty busy. Um, we've raised over $450 million um, for over 250 portfolio companies um, across, you know, a very wide range of different sectors, um, di like from companies all across the world, um, from all different stages. I think a common question I get is, you know, what are the actual sizes of these rounds? Um, I think historically, you know, holistically, we're seeing an average raise size of, of about $3 million. Million. Um, I will caveat that by saying, you know, we've had a number of very large growth stage rounds that might skew that a little bit. So if we cut out these like growth stage 10 million plus rounds, um, we're looking at an average raise of, of about a million. Um, and I, you know, I talked about this, we're building a two sided marketplace. So outside of, you know, me and my team on the venture going after um, companies and helping them raise capital. Um, we've also, you know, spent a lot of time growing our investor community. Um, so part of our mission is to, you know, democratize access um, to capital, um, uh, democratize access to the private markets. Um, so allowing investors, even everyday investors to invest in, you know, top notch opportunities that they normally would not be able to. Um, so we have about 600,000 investors within our network, about 15% of those are um, accredited investors managed by our capital markets team. Um, so when you come to work with us, you know, we're looking to leverage, you know, some parts, all um, of this, you know, seed invest network um, of investors. Next slide. Um, so like I mentioned, um, we've worked with, you know, high quality companies from all different stages. Um, this is just a select um, few. Um, so like now our X is standing out to me because we just closed on their um, 35 million and counting um, series C round last year. Um, this is a company that, you know, we were able to support back in 2017 um, with their seed round. Um, I think we raised about, you know, 750K for them. They only had about a thousand customers back then, um, but have since, you know, grown dramatically. Um, and we've essentially been able to help now Rx um, cap um, raise you know the entirety of the capital that's um, built to grow um, their business so they're you know a retail tech driven you know pharmacy company um, that is you know, once one kind of company, um, but as you can see, you know, this is a big cross section of other companies. Heliogen um, is in the clean tech space. It's a solar company. Um, we helped them raise, you know, a 2 million bridge round back in, I don't even know, like a couple of years ago. Um, and then they're actually one of the 
I would want to say like probably the biggest exits um, in crowdfunding history. They recently went public um, and our investors who were able to invest in the bridge round a couple of years ago um, saw a pretty meaningful exit. I want to say it was like 44X. Um, so that was obviously really exciting for, for our investors and really exciting um, for Heliogen and for, for us as well. Um, but a clear, you know, cross section here in terms of you know different um, kinds of industries. Um, we're seed invest, um, but we're not limited to just seed. Um, we're looking to work with companies um, from their seed to Series A to Series B, um, and be your you know your life cycle fundraising partner. Next slide, please. Um, so a few different ways that, you know, we commonly work with companies. Um, definitely not, you know, limited to just this, but there, you know, are three most common use cases, if you will. Um, so the first one is, you know, in topping off VC and institutional lead rounds. So what does that mean? Um, so let's say, you know, you already, you know, hit the pavement running and you have a few checks in, um, but you're, you, you essentially, you know, want to hire someone else to help fill out the rest of your round, um, that's where we could potentially come in. Um, so we're looking at anywhere from, you know, 500K to 1.5 million, maybe even 2 million in top off capital um, in this route. Um, so you're coming to us with the lead and we're essentially helping you fill out the rest. Um, and that's, you know, probably our quickest um, route because we usually do this um, with our credit investor network only, um, which makes it a little bit easier from the regulatory perspective. Um, but, you know, our bread and butter and where we're raising the most capital um, is with these crowd-driven rounds. Um, so we have, you know, your community and crowd-driven capital um, for these, you know, earlier stage companies. You can raise upwards of 500 million through this um, route. And this is your, you know, traditional, you know, equity crowdfunding, if you will. So we're going out to the full seed invest network. We're going out to your community, if that's something that you want to do. Um, and we're going out to, you know, the general public. Um, and this is a great way for companies who, you know, are, you know, marketing, are into, you know, brand building and really bringing on commu your community to become, you know, evangelists um, in your raise. Same, similar concept with the crowd, uh, crowd powered growth capital. This is just um, you know, this community driven thing, but in a much larger scale, you can see you can raise up to 75 million through this route. Um, as you can imagine, you know, it takes a little bit longer to do so. Um, but it's essentially, you know, we help you set up um, the campaign. Um, there's an investment profile. And this is where investors all come um, online um, to learn about the opportunity and ultimately to invest. So we're here to be, you know, your marketing partners, um, your compliance partners, your legal partners partners um, and essentially helping you like PM and manage the entire process um, to raise, you know, different levels of, you know, capital. So next slide. Um, another common question I get is, you know, um, I'm, you know, talking to VCs right now, like traditional VCs. Um, can I still, you know, work with Seed Invest? Um, we are absolutely, we are complementary. So a number of our companies um, have, you know, either raised from traditional VC in the past, um, are currently raising from, you know, VCs in the current round that you're looking to raise in, um, or, you know, go on to raise um, traditional venture capital or go on to raise from private equity or go public, get acquired, merge. So um, it's very much complementary to the rest of the ecosystem. Um, again, we're really here to be your fundraising partners. Um, so to bring to make the fundraising process a little bit easier um, and also, you know, utilize, you know, different marketing tools um, to, you know, kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. So you're marketing, you're raising capital and you're doing both. Next slide. Um, so just a selection of different funds that, you know, we've co-invested with. Um, not much to speak to here, um, but you can see definitely not, um, you know, at odds, um, definitely complementary. And we work with a lot of uh, funds to, you know, help them with top off capital if they have, you know, a company that they're writing a check with, but they need some excess capital. Um, we're here to, you know, fill out the rest of that without, you know, necessarily taking a board seat. So that's always a benefit to them. Um, we're passive capital um, and really here to just, you know, help companies get funded. 
Next slide. Um, another iteration of, you know, um, I think a common misconception is, you know, we are seed invest, so we must only work with seed stage companies. Um, definitely, you know, we definitely work with seed stage companies. I want to say at over half of our companies are, you know, seed stage, um, but we really are here to be your, you know, fundraising partner. Um, seed is an, a really exciting place to be um, from a company perspective as well as an investor perspective. Um, so we do see a lot of activity in that space, um, and which is reflected here as well. Um, but companies who are doing well um, and, you know, are continuing to do well, um, we're really here to help, you know, continuously fund um, and, you know, leverage our network um, and, you know, different regulatory exemptions um, to help you do that. Um, and so one thing that we do a little bit differently than, you know, other people or other platforms or other services out there is, again, we are really here to be your fundraising partner. Um, and part of our diligence is to, you know, figure out just that is, you know, are we going to be the right partner for you? Um, do we believe based off of what we're seeing from the company um, and but based off what we've seen in our ability and our network, et cetera, um, do we think we can deliver on the capital you're looking for. So that's number one. I um, mean, as a result, you know, we are looking to partner with a select group of companies um, so that, you know, we are able to, you know, devote our resources, our time, our teams um, to, you know, every company that is raising with us. So we're not like, you know, a platform for anyone to come. Um, we're here, we're going to fully staff your, your deal. You'll have a full team to help you, you know, raise the capital. Um, and we're, you know, fully here our 70 person team um, is here to help you um, get to that next step so again we're a bespoke partner from the regulatory side, um, we operate our own broker dealer, um, which essentially means, you know, we have a lot of flexibility um, in, you know, how we can help companies fundraise. Um, and we are also very experienced in, you know, that legal compliance regulatory space. So we can help you do, um, do this kind of raise um, in a compliant way to best protect you guys going forward. Um, we can serve as both, you know, your lead um, or your follow on. So we can help you, you, you know, essentially we can help fund a company um, raise from zero to, you know, a million, two million, um, whatever you're looking to do, we're here to help structure it and see, you know, is this something that um, we can essentially deliver on? Um, and we can do it all through either, you know, completely publicly. So like we're doing the whole marketing thing, we're doing digital ads, or we're, do, we're like sending a lot of emails, or we can do it, you know, completely privately. Um, and we're really just using, you know, a select market or we're really just using, you know, the seed invest um, platform as, you know, a transactions mean. So we're pretty flexible in that way. Um, a common question I also get is, you know, what does it mean to like take on thousands, if not tens of thousands of new investors? Um, we're here to essentially make that, you know, plausible, feasible. Um, so obviously you're not gonna end up with thousands or tens of thousands of new investors on your cap table. Um, we help with that you know, cap table management with a one line item on the cap table solution. So what you see is um, essentially you know, a trust account. I think that's you know, the, the most popular um, you know, means that we've been using these days um, where all the investors essentially become beneficia uh, beneficiaries of the trust and that's what gets Seen on your cap table. And that's what we help you guys manage going forward. So again, long-term partner, we're going to be here to help you manage these investors going forward. Um, and during the raise, um, you have a full team to help you guys, you know, fundraise um, throughout. So you outsource, you know, some of your, you know, CPA work um, to an accountant. In some ways, you're, you know, outsourcing part of the fundraising um, to another team. So you have a little bit more time back um, to actually run your business. And one little carrot that we've been, you know, running in the past couple of months um, is for companies who are interested in the marketing side. Um, we've, uh, you know, committed to really dedicate our own resources to helping, you know, companies raise their round and build that brand and marketing um, power. Um, so we'll actually contribute, you know, some of our own capital to, you know, raising these marketing driven rounds. Um, so anywhere from, you know, at least $15,000 upwards of a million 
million in digital advertising dollars. It's something that you know we've honed over the past couple of years for companies um, who are raising through this route, um, and we have seen it it works. So we're, we're really looking to put you know our money where our mouth is um, and help companies you know test this and do this. Um, so that's just a little perk that we have running for um, hopefully the rest of the year because I love this promotion. Next one. So yeah, so that is, you know, equity crowdfunding and seed invest in a nutshell. Um, if you have any questions or if you're interested in learning more, feel free to reach out to me at jing at seedinvest.com. Um, if you have any, you know, interest in the circle side, obviously we're all one team. So feel free to reach out to me as well. Um, I'm happy to put you in touch with the right person. Um, but I look forward to, you know, chatting with some of you later. Great. Jing, thank you for that. It seems like yeah. Seed Invest is a wonderful partner to have in fundraising. And in case anyone in our audience is like, is this right for me? I want to maybe do a little case study. Um, you mentioned Heliogen, 40% yeah. return. Oh my goodness. 44X. No. So companies who you invested, well, I think like a thousand dollars and you saw forty forty thousand dollars back in your bank account. Like we've had some investors, you know, come back and, and write to us, like our customer service team, like, Hey, like, is this a mistake or what happened? Like you haven't been checking your emails. So, um, that was really exciting for us. So we think that was, you know, one of the largest returns, um, in, you know, equity crowdfunding and it really, you know, galvanized, um, the need to like allow people to have access, um, to this opportunity. And I, I know Heliogen itself, founded by Bill Gross, he was, you know, a, he is an amazing founder. Um, I, I think it's a funny story. And like in that round itself, they raised a small like retail focused um, plus accredited um, investor round. Um, so he had everything from, you know, the cab driver that took him to like our pitch event invest um, to, you know, someone from like USC invested, you know, a thousand dollars, but just happened to be like the right person to broker, you know, a multi-million dollar deal with them. Um, so it really just shows the power of, you know, exposure um, and just being able to, you know, run a raise online. So Heliogen is a clean energy company, solar, hydrogen. Why was Seed Invest the right fit for them to raise on? Yeah. So back in the day, you know, Bill Gross himself is very much a believer in democratizing access. So that was, you know, number one key. Um, and they were also, okay. you know, in a place where they're looking to raise, you know, a bridge round. Um, and so we were like well positioned to help them just like fill that out quickly. So it was a mixture of one one, let's bring in, you know, the crowd. This is, you know, a space that, you know, impacts everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Let's, you know, get people bought into this. Um, and two, you know, it's also a company where he had a vision where this would be, you know, a public company one day. Um, and we've seen a lot of companies, you know, kind of utilize this as, you know, a dress rehearsal in some ways of like, at some point you get to a point where, you know, the, the size of your company or like the exit of your company is related to like the public markets and the public sentiment. Um, so this is a great, you know, dress rehearsal to start bringing in people early um, to get to know your company, to literally back your company. Um, so so, you know, you you have that from the get go. Great things to consider for everyone out there who might still be on the fence about if Seed Invest is right for them. Jing, thank you so much for this information. Um, really grateful that you guys are here and sponsoring today. Awesome. Good to see you all. Bye.